So, I, I mean, I think it's good. And I think these rotors are good, too. No, they're they're bad. We have pad. You know, the axles are still there. Uh, this tie rod looks uh, better than the other one. You know, inspection complete. Mr. Dose has arrived once again to the comforts of Bay One at the shop. We've got some work to do. Uh, we need to raise them up about an inch front and rear. The rear's easy because it's got adjustable coilovers. The front, not so much. So for that, we have spring spacers until I build adjustable coilovers for the front. He's rubbing the tires off. The tires are looking pretty haggard, front and rear both. So we're going to raise them up, and then we're going to see about a little surgery on those wheel arches. Could be a minor surgery, could be a major surgery. Don't know yet until we get into it. So, you know, let's take off, I guess. Okay, so the wheels are off here. I've already used, uh, you know, my expert skills to install uh, adjustable suspension in the front. And the way you adjust it is um, you get these rubber spring spacers and you, uh, you put them in there and bam, you've added three quarter of an inch of, uh, of, of, tra of height. Not travel, just of height. What we're trying to do is clear to try to keep this rubbing down. And honestly, now that I'm in here looking at it, it's not as bad as I thought it might be. But it's it's rubbing pretty bad, and that's pretty clearly from the outside of the wheel. Whenever the wheel is turned to the right, we're on the left side of the car here. Whenever the wheel is turned to the right and the suspension bumps. So, I mean, it's probably still gonna hit and go brrr every once in a while, but it'll be a little bit less now. I was worried that it was in the lip that I was gonna have to adjust. But you can see all the way around the lip, there's not, well, right there, a little bit of rubby rub. And then up here, there's some rubbing going on. But uh, it's not terrible. It's not bad. So I don't feel like the car needs like big old fender flares or whatever. It just needed some plastic cut out here so it didn't make terrible noises. And that, you know, honestly, this this might just come out. We might just end up taking that out uh, just for the noise factor. But it's just noise. It's just sound. This is a rallycross car. I don't have to worry about it making terrible sounds. I have to worry about it ruining the tires. So we're trying to get it to keep it from ruining the tires, which... This is what's happening to the tires right here. We're knocking the knob off of the outside of it because it's rubbing down on that metal, right? No big deal. We still got all these knobs, lots of knobs, right? Um, so I think we're okay here up in the front, but let's go take a look at the rear now. So here we are at the rear of the car where we have actual adjustable suspension that will also get adjusted. We're gonna dial that up as far as we can. The springs are kind of already compressed because I've got really long springs in here. So I'm gonna have to either compress the springs a little bit more so I can dial this up or I'm just gonna have to use my muscles and see if I can compress it. We'll, we'll see what happens. Where we're rubbing in here, I thought it was gonna be, you know, in here, on this lip, on this jagged crap back here because what we've got from these tires is, you know, some chunk of chunkas. Oh, that's the inside. Well, we have chunk of chunkas out of the inside too, but uh, on the outside, we're starting to see some splitting at the bottom of the blocks. So I feel like the blocks are getting grabbed and they're getting pulled on. And that's what's causing those splits in the knobs. They're starting to pull off from one another. Maybe they're getting cut too. I don't know, but just by looking at it, I can't see where it's rubbing a whole lot. I mean, this tape would just be gone if it was rubbing in there. All I see really is in this area here, we've got rubbage right here. And I think that probably could be caused by the fact that this flare is beat to crap. It's all pushed in. So I have a solution for this. We're just gonna tickle that bodywork a little bit, give it a good massage. We got our massager here. And uh, 
We'll just, you know, right about the area where that dent is, we'll just even right through the plastic. Uh, you just got to give her a good swing to get through the plastic, but we'll just give her some good, you know, massaging. This is how body work is done. Top quality work right here. This this splitting, don't worry about that. That's on the outside of the car. We don't care about the outside of the car. What it looks like out here does not affect how long our tires last. I honestly think that might be enough now. Let's take a look at the previously rubbing area. And I think that that plastic's pushed in some now. But again, that's just, it's plastic. We're not worried about it. We're not worried about the plastic itself. We're worried about it rubbing the tires and catching on the tires. So maybe we could also just cut this out. Just one little section there. And I think to do that, I'll go ahead and try to get this off, which will probably be rusted on. And see if I can't uh, bend the inner fender out a little bit, cut that out, and try to make a nice little area where nothing rubs. You know? Look, at it stops up here. We can just cut down from up there to about that screw, and then maybe nothing will rub in there. And we're back here, having used our metal shears to cut plastic, and just clear out the fender well liner where it was hitting on the tire. Now, it's gonna be floppier, for sure. Might make more noise when something does hit it, um, and you'll say, but you're going to get stuff up in there. Yeah, it's a, look at it. It's a rally cross car. It does not matter. What matters is that we protect the majority and we protect the tires. Most of all, we got to have longevity on our tires. So I think that's done. Next is this. Uh, let's try to bring her, bring her up about three quarters of an inch, just like we did up front. Okay, what we got here is a three millimeter nut. It's just holding this collar in place. No big deal, right? Now we should be able to spin the collar freely. Hey, we can. And dial it up three quarters to uh, an inch. And we'll count the number of threads down here to match it up to the other side uh, to try to make it as even as we can get it. So, I'm gonna do that, it's gonna take both hands, so. Okay. Is that up or down? Presuming that the threads are correct, that should be up. I'll know when it gets tougher to turn. And what we may get out of this is uh, as much as we can get without having to compress the springs. I could compress the springs. Um, I could go grab a pair of vice grips or something and see if I could get it to rick. <sighs> but that's about as much as I could do. Maybe a clamp of some kind that would be very dangerous. Some sort of very dangerous contraption. Or I just spin it up until I can't spin it up anymore. And we call that good. And that might be what we do. <sighs> that could be it right there. I feel like if I had a tool of some kind that would allow me to wrench it around, I used to have some sort of some sort of coil over wrench. I guess I could go looking for that. The tool is here. This is your coil over uh, wrenchy tool. And um, the idea is you get this tooth into one of the holes and then you can spin it. You gotta get it far enough around, or you get it into the hole, and then you give her a good cranking. See? And so we've come up a couple more threads. A uh, smarter feller than me probably would've cleaned these threads before you did this because you're just chewing on dirt, but you know what? I mean, I'm not too concerned with it. So I'll go. Again, I think I'm just gonna try to get, that's, if, I, if we go back and review the videotape, I feel like we were, you know, I could have counted, but I feel like we were one, two, three, four, five up, and now we're, you know, 10, 11. I'm gonna keep going. We're looking for three quarter to an inch out of this. 
And I think, I'm going to say that we're there. I mean, I'm going to count these up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and it's on the 12th one. So that's what we're going to do to the other side. I just need to lock this down. Conveniently, I put the set screw right where I can get to it with my 3 millimeter Allen. So now I'll set it, and uh, we'll roll on to the other side. I'll get that done, and then we'll put the whole car on the ground. Ready? Here we go. All right, here we are on the passenger side. I have already raised up the coilover and done the set screw. We got 12 threads from bottom to top. And, um, you know, there's a little bit of... Mm, yeah, I mean, it's it's not perfect. Concore quality back here, but we're doing all right. Uh, this was real jaggedy and nasty, so I've just kind of, you know... Taken off pieces of Bondo and metal and whatnot. And then I've uh, rolled, I rolled it. I professionally rolled the fender. That's what I did. Um, so that's nice. And this, I feel like I gotta leave that. It just, speed or something. There's no indication of rubbing in here that I can see at all. Nothing is overly exciting. You know, I'm sure there's a little bit happening up in here where this stuff is flaking off, but there's no like streaks of of uh, rub. So I, I mean, I think it's good. And I think these rotors are good too. No, they're they're bad. They're, nothing's good back here, but we got, we have pad, you know, the axles are still there. Nothing's cracked. The, uh, this tie rod looks uh, better than the other one. So yeah, I mean, you know, inspection complete. So the suspension is raised, the, Arch is you know, rolled, and uh, I think that we just get the wheels back on, put this sucker down on the ground, and we'll uh, we'll see how it looks. Well, here we are, back on the ground with more space. I did a bad job video making, and I didn't show you that there was you know less space than there is now, but now there's more front and rear, and honestly, the front <laughs> might be sitting a little bit higher than the rear, but that'll come down as those uh, spring helpers compress a little bit. The next step is gonna be to get inside and do the uh, straps on the passenger side, the shoulder straps. I never could get any that worked. I've got lap belts in, but the shoulder belts that I had, three inch wide straps, they were meant to be bolted onto a cage and have a place to bolt them on. So I bought the wrapper things, harness, Wraps? I don't know what you call them. And that's what we're going to do. And then I can have passengers and the boys can ride along and uh, I can ride with Miles while he drives. That's the most important thing. So we'll get into that right now. He All right, here's the situation. These aren't attached. And how they attach is a uh, bolty guy. You know, these are some secondhand jobs that I'd had for a while and I thought maybe I could make them work in here. The lap belts were no problem. Uh, but these... They don't attach to a harness bar like a roll-up strap does. So, I'm solutioneering at the current point in time. A couple of potential solutions. Um, I don't think it's uh, kosher or legal to put you know any sort of attachment on the bar that you then attach this to, but that seems like, man, wouldn't that be nice if there was just a clamp that I could clamp on real good and tight and then... And put a put that big honking you know bolt thing that's down there through it and uh, bolt it up. Uh, the next solution that I thought of is just spending the real money and getting another race quip harness uh, that you know has the cam lock and all that stuff and it's safety and it's usability. The the car for the driver and the co driver, you know, it should be the same process to get in from one side to the other. Um, so you're familiar with it on either side. And since Miles is driving, he's 15, I have to ride with him. So I gotta be able to snap into the other side and vice versa and flip around. Um, so I think I might bite the bullet. They're on overnight on Prime. It's gonna be $170. I really don't have that money to spend right now. But the way I'm looking at it is that that's safety for now and safety in the future. It's a small price to pay, really, for safety. And, you know, how safe is it? I don't really know. At least this car kind of creates its own roll cage, right? 
Um, so if you're kept upright, you know, we roll over rally cross speeds. We're not going to kill ourselves. You know, we're not going to get smushed down or whatever. A lot of people say that the harnesses aren't great for, you know, um, uh, roll over prone situations. But I think in this car, in this situation, uh, the keeping the movement down from the, from the driver and the passenger is probably the, the best thing. And really the, you know, the free solution option number three. If I didn't throw them away already, somewhere there are um, stock belts for this car, the seat belts. But that would require getting in past that area there to bolt it back up, which the bolt's in there still because I know myself and I knew that I would maybe need it. And then the problem is up here where it bolts in. I don't think you can bolt the stock belt behind that um, harness bar. So... That option's out. The only option we have is to, I think, buy new belts. Uh, we'll check in once I have belts, and we'll get this thing good to go for Sunday. Okay, here's what we got. A dog. But look, I made shoulder straps. Um, here's the goofy setup that I managed to throw together. So I've got a strap wrapped properly, just like those straps, and it goes to a buckle that has a, you know, um, bolt hole in it, and then we've got the buckle with the bolt hole in it from the V-belts, the shoulder V-belts there, and I've just, you know, used something that came with all this stuff long ago that I had in there to bolt it up, good grade 8 hardware, and now we've got a bolted shoulder belt that comes to a V, behind the seat and we can put the seat back where it ought to be and the belts come out had to kind of mush the or pull up the uh you know fancy rubber things on the headrest there to get them uh, out of the way so a little bit more clearance but yeah i belt in there just fine and everything feels good i cleared it with eric uh from hot hatch racing who's also uh licensed licensed He's done the safety training, uh, at least for tech, I think. I don't know. But he techs cars at Rallycross. I'll check it with Ryan, too. Um, uh, Eric was just already talking to me about it, so I guess I could ask Ryan. I don't know why I didn't. I'll do that. I'm sure Ryan will say it's fine. People have much worse stuff that they uh, put into their cars to run autocross and rallycross with, so I don't think this is going to be a problem, and um, I can get in and out of it just fine. I'll have to give a little training to Miles to get in and out of it. He's never driven this car. He's never dealt with, I don't think, either of these types of harnesses before. So that'll be a little bit, a uh, little bit of a learning curve. And then, um, and then, you know, I don't know how we're going to get the straps around Sammy, but he's definitely going to have to ride. You driving? He's driving. I think we're ready to race on Sunday. Besides the fact that this tire below me uh, keeps losing air. Not really concerned about it. So it's up more in the front than it is in the rear, which is fine. I think that could also be attributed to the tires that are never staying inflated. So I swapped Dale into the shop and got the MR2 out. We'll leave it outside and get it ready for Sunday, get it on the trailer, should it happen to actually not rain on Friday and we can actually race. So that is going to do it until we go racing. So it's race day for the MR2, um, but this this is not exactly a place to go racing. Instead, we're at Larry's house with the whole Kansas City Rallycross crew, enjoying the Chiefs game and each other's company. Say hello, everyone. Hi. I'm showing the racing that we're doing today since I got the MR2 ready to race. <laughs> there's, there's the racing that we're doing right there. So here the MR2 sits. Uh, ready to go for next season, and uh, the, this season is over now. Uh, we might have an event, you know, we might pull off an event in the Kansas region or something, but Kansas City's rallycross season is over, and the MR2 never got to compete in the Kansas City uh, rallycross season. Had the car for the whole season, and never did a single Kansas City event. We did stuff in the fit. Um, earlier in the season, and we tried to do an event in the MR2, but it got uh, rained out, like right at the beginning of the event, and then this event got rained out. So, you know, at least the uh, shoulder 
harness for the passenger side is all taken care of, and we might make that a little bit better before next season. Height is raised up a little bit, even though that tire's flat in the rear, so, you know, you, you can't really uh, say that it's fully raised up at the moment, but uh, it should be ready to go for next season. We might just have to do a little bit of maintenance work change on the oil change the belt out that's squeaky and i'm just i'm not going to rebuild anything on this we're just going to send it the way that it is next season clearly we'll fix the tires though and, and make sure that the beads clean on these uh bmw wheels so that they hold air because you know i like i like it when my tires actually have air in them that's they're normally better that way but um that's all for this time um and we'll catch up with the mr2 some other time i guess so uh until then uh, see you later. Don't stop recording yet, please, because I gotta walk off this way. You keep pointing at the car, and I'll walk off this way. What are you doing? What do you think you need? I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting there. You're thinking about it. So, oh, Not that, the other way. Okay. There you go. Now do the same with this one. Yep, through, through there. Yep. And now you slide that whole thing. Put your hook down. Yep. And now... And now put the hook back up. And you latch it down tight. And then you would tighten down the straps on this side. You do your lap belts first. And then you do your shoulder belts. Pull them, yeah, you gotta pull them hard. Those are way loose on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, something like that.